So I am going to, I'm not sure, yep, Fiona's obviously a lot better looking than I am. Um, I'm going to give you a very quick, because I was told I needed, I had five minutes, so I'm going to give you a very quick overview of cool soils, but probably spend a little bit more time about what's the next iteration and where are we going within the cool soils framework. Um, so what, what is cool soils? So cool soils is essentially a partnership between the supply chain in, in, in the grains industry. Uh, we've got partners from Kellogg's, Allied Pinnacle, PepsiCo, Mars, um, Manildra, Corson, coming together to understand what their scope three emissions are, is today, but what it needs to be in the future. And working then with their supply base to help the producers on the journey of how do the producers go about reducing scope three emissions. The critical piece to the program isn't around what's the number, it's actually what's the practice change that enables a reduction in emissions. The reality is the supply chain needs to report against emissions moving forward and they'll need to report against changes in the emissions and that's a critical uh, trigger point for practice change and working with the supply base and the farming communities to develop new practices, improved practices to actually help farmers and producers reduce their emissions. Essentially the program works on, on the GHG emission reporting with benchmark data across the regions um, and importantly this is a science and evidence based model using a global platform called the Cool Farm Tool. So really great to see that we're internationally recognised in the calculation of the number, scientifically validated to Australian conditions. There are some very unique frameworks around Australia that make us different as a producing nations to other parts of the world. But we need to be able to, to be globally relevant and globally evidence-based. The consolidated data, and I haven't been here for much of the morning this morning, but it's been really interesting to hear the last couple of presenters talk about data. The, col the whole focus of, of the Cool Soils program is not to replicate existing data that exists within producers, to actually find new ways to draw down on that data, partner with other data providers, and to consolidate that data into a framework to produce an emissions result, and then to help develop reporting back within the supply chain, but also, most importantly, and the horizontal, to support practice change understanding the practices that can be improved within the production system, identifying the levers that can be used to actually apply practice change, test those innovations, drive impact, and actually create a community of practice within the farming communities that supports emissions reduction practice improvement. And that's a critical dimension. It's not about just measuring, it's around how do we work within the communities and across the supply chain to reduce emissions. Um, every farmer receives a, a detailed report on, on their uh, results on an annual basis and the changes that are occur, but most importantly they also receive a benchmark around how they're performing against their cohort, but importantly also what are the activities, what are the practice changes that they can be undertaking, what does best practice look like that helps evolve the emissions reduction program within a farming community. Um, it's really great to see in, in the program we have, we have over 200 growers in the, in the original project and we're now scaling that across an industry with the supply chain partners. Over 400,000 hectares of validated data over five years. And you can see there some of the key results, the emissions intensity, um, but the most important one is the emissions trend line. So a reduction in emissions during that five year period, not because we measured it, but because we actually supported the farming communities through the, the support and extension and adoption programs to help farmers reduce their emissions feeding into their supply chain. Um, what's next for CSI? So obviously one of the core parameters of this has been a very strong project in partnership with the, the major members of, of the program over the last five years. We've just announced in, in February this year the expansion of that program, reinvestment from the supply chain. I think this is probably one of the key triggers to this. This is not funding that we're drawing and asking producers to 
to provide. This program is actually funded and supported by the supply chain. So we're actually trying to get the funding and investment from within the supply chain so it doesn't end up on the producer's, producer's bottom line. Um, obviously, one of the key parameters that is, is to expand beyond our current grain portfolio with the introduction of beef, moving into mixed farming, introduction to other crops and areas such as wine, grapes, uh, and, and the rice industry. That will give us the ability to actually expand into a mixed farming and a, and a complete array of commodity services, again, with the supply chain partners, focusing on in helping producers improve their carbon emissions as part of a scope three analysis. And then why this is so important for the conversation today is, as I, as I mentioned in my opening address, I've just come back from two weeks to look at what's on the horizon within the European context. Biodiversity, uh, natural capital, and regenerative agriculture are coming at us. Whether we like it or not, that's the reality. The European Union is, is, is currently working out what, does they, what do those terms mean? What do they mean to the sectors in which they, they apply, but also to the farming communities in which they apply? As that evolves, we will see, like carbon emissions, those areas around market access, regulatory controls, incentives, whether it's producer incentives, whether it's market incentives, start to play out and see the introduction of these concepts being brought into effect in Australia. So what we're focused on is taking our base platform and looking at, in a cooperative sense with our producer cohorts and the supply chain to start to understand and establish the right parameters around natural capital, the right parameters around biodiversity and regenerative agriculture, and to enable us to think about what does the future look like? How do we measure, how do we actually understand it first and clearly define what it is? How do we measure it? But importantly, what are the practice changes that might need to be in incorporated into farming operations to improve the activities around natural capital, regenerative ag, and biodiversity? That is effectively coming down the pipeline, as is our host, telling me to wind up. So thank you. <laughs>